All right, welcome back to another episode, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day, as always. Real fast, Manitoba, like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff that helps out the show. It truly does help. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook and YouTube. That's Manitoba Freethinker Podcast. MB Freethinker on Twitter, TikTok, and Rumble. Uh, you can go to my website, mbfreethinker.wordpress.com. Or uh, you can pretty much go to any audio, like podcast player, if you want the audio only show. All right. Manitoba. At a certain point, we have to hold our elected officials accountable for the job they're doing. Or, I mean, I should say not doing. Like, how come every time they come out and spend our money, they are, they're willing to get in front of the cameras, hold press conferences, and they, they literally just tell us Manitobans they have our back. And when the, you know, when, when the shit hits the fan, where are they? Um, like, they are literally nowhere to be found. Every week I'm reporting the same issues that our elected officials claim that they're solving crime, health care, economy. And like I understand Manitoba that these these um issues take time. It's not like they they could be solved overnight. But these are issues that have been going on for years. It's, like this is not just a conservative problem, like a PC problem. These issues, healthcare issues, crime has been going on since the NDP. Like, I think the NDP invented hallway medicine. Um, and, and again, I'm not saying liberal. We only have to look to the federal side of things to see how they would govern. And in my opinion, that's a disaster. So, honestly, Manitoba, I think, honestly, we need new blood. And, like... We need new people and like new ways of governing. Obviously, the status quo is not working. Um, I don't have that much hope after the um, after the uh, Winnipeg civic election. We pretty much just hired or sorry, elected, you know, a career politician in Scott Gillingham. So, I mean, I don't have much hope for that, but I honestly come 2023, October on the provincial side of things, I hope that we, Manitoba, truly takes a, a good look at the Keystone Party. I think that they are going to be a grassroots movement. Um, and it seems like they are truly led from the bottom up, not the top down like the main three parties, how they operate. So I'm going to show you, Manitoba, what status quo gives us. Take take a look at this. <laughs> like, this is what electing the same, like, quote-unquote boys club gives us. And I understand that, like, uh, Scott Gillingham just recently got elected, but he wanted the job and he knew what he was getting into. Um, and all these articles are recent. This is our Manitoba. Like, like. What is Manitoba offering us? Like I said, week in, week out, our elected officials come on TV and they claim that they have our back. And they're solving these issues. From CBC News, Manitoba has country's second highest homicide rate in 2021. Second highest out of Canada. A report from Stats Canada shows the national homicide rate has increased for a third consecutive year. And nearly one quarter of killings in 2021 were connected to gangs. So this is obviously a Canada-wide issue. But Manitoba is the second. I'll scroll down. Manitoba had the second highest rate. What is going on? 
And that is, it's not like, it's definitely a province wide issue. I'll pull up this next article here. RCMP praised Manitoba mom for cool headedness during kidnapping. Manitoba RCMP are crediting a mom who acted cool under pressure for preventing a heroin kidnapping from turning out much worse. The incident took place Friday afternoon when the woman who was with her two year old daughter stopped to help a man who appeared to be in distress on the side of the road. What a fucking piece of shit. Police said the man who had been faking the medical distress got in her car and demanded she drive him to Winnipeg. The mother and daughter managed to get out safely in Winnipeg near Polo Park and the 62-year-old suspect was arrested and charged on Sunday after a search involving RCMP and Winnipeg police. So police say they received a call that got disconnected soon after, but they were able to hear the voices of a man and a woman, and the call played a big role in helping officers find them quickly. Quote, we've got to give the mom a lot of credit here, Petal said. Uh, Inspector Paul Petal. Uh, She was very chaotic. Uh, She was in a very chaotic, traumatic situation with her child, and she had the courage to make the right decisions. In these stressful situations. Petal said it's human nature to want to help someone in need. Yeah man like. I don't fault her for stopping but. uh, I mean she's definitely not going to do that again. Definitely not with her two year old on board. Quote when you hear stories like this I know it's extremely rare. A situation like this a kidnapping that's the thing we always want to do. We always want to help people. The suspect is in custody facing a number of serious charges, including two counts of kidnapping, two counts of forcible confinement, and abduction of a person under 14. He's also facing three counts of assault with a weapon on a police officer, dangerous operation of a motor vehicle, and possessing stolen property over 5000 in connection with an incident earlier that afternoon outside a Portage de Prairie hotel. So, Manitoba, let's see how long this guy will be in jail for. He'll probably be out on probation. He's probably already out on probation, to be honest with you. So, but this is, uh, so this is a pro- oh, Canada-wide pro- problem. Definitely a Manitoba problem. And this is what we have in Winnipeg. Man arrested carrying a grenade in Winnipeg neighborhood. It turns out that after, like, the police did think it was real, and then after close inspection, it turns out to be fake. But this is the kind of shit that is happening in our neighborhoods, in our Manitoba neighborhoods, in our Winnipeg neighborhoods. And uh, so Manitoba's second highest, and spoiler alert, Winnipeg doesn't want to let us down. Winnipeg breaks homicide record. And this is from November 6th. 45th homicide in Winnipeg alone on November 6th. November 14th homicide investigation that happened on the 12th. November 26th, homicide. So, like, not only did we break our record at the beginning of November, we already surpassed it by two murders. We still have another month to go. So, like I said, I know Scott Gillingham just recently got elected, but at a certain point, he knew what he was getting into. So, that is just crime. Manitoba, we're failing everywhere. Immediate action needed as physician shortage reaches historic high, say doctors in Manitoba. The organization that represents doctors in Manitoba says it's stagger, staggered by a growing shortage of physicians in the province and more needs to be done to address a uh, projected exodus. Manitoba has 217 doctors per 100,000 Residents, a report released last week by the Canadian Institute for Health Information says 
the third lowest rate in the country, ahead only of Saskatchewan and Prince Edward Island. The province would need 405 more physicians to reach the Canadian average of 246 per 100,000 residents, Doctors Manitoba said on Thursday, citing the CIHI data. That's up 13% from a shortfall of 359 doctors in Manitoba in 2020, and the highest number reported over five decades of monitoring the Physicians Advocacy Organization, said in its latest update on physician resources. So this shortage under the PC party is the best it's been. So this is what I mean. I'm not harp. I'm not saying that we shouldn't vote PC. I'm, I'm, I'm saying we should give Keystone a, a look, not go NDP or Liberal. The shortage affects all Manitobans, said Dr. Candace Bradshaw, a family physician and the president of Doctors Manitoba. Quote, whether you're trying to find a family doctor waiting to see a specialist, concerned about overcrowding in the EI, ER, or stuck in the surgery and testing backlog. Quote, without a big change, the physician shortage is projected to get even worse uh, in the short term, with 43% of physicians planning on retiring, leaving the province, or reducing clinical hours, end quote Bradshaw said at a Thursday news conference citing the findings of an October survey conducted by Doctors Manitoba. The loss of doctors is preventable, but only if the province acts quickly, she said. The loss of doctors is preventable. About three quarters of those who said they are planning to leave the province or reduce their hours identified systematic issues as key reasons for their frustration, especially excessive paperwork, unreasonable on-call hours, and a lack of control over patient care, according to Doctors Manitoba Survey. The organization has submitted possible solutions to the government, said Bradshaw. All we're waiting is for action, quote unquote. <laughs> Good luck, Bradshaw. In late October, the organization released five recommendations to help the province recruit and retain healthcare staff, including expanding training, making recruitment efforts more straightforward, and coming up with financial in incentives to smooth out out of province candidates transition to Manitoba. Two weeks ago, the, Manit uh, the provincial government held a news conference together with Doctors Manitoba and the Manitoba Nurses Union to announce a plan to add 2,000 healthcare professionals to the public system with $200 million in funding. Health Minister Audrey Gordon addressed media on Thursday and explained that there are a number of incentives that are being put in place for nurses and allied healthcare workers to stay at their jobs, especially in rural and remote communities. Quote, this is just the beginning. We're going to do more in terms of having discussions and listening to the front lines, end quote, she said. They love to talk, Manitoba. They love to take your money and talk. Bradshaw wants to see a concrete action plan and commitment to accept all of the doctor's Manitoba proposals. Quote, in two weeks, we've seen a lot of promises and interest and optimism, but we need action, Bradshaw said. You snooze, you lose, and we have to get on this yesterday. Gordon said she's committed to moving forward with the doctor's recommendations. Quote, we, all, we will continue to listen to do what's best to ensure not just individuals working in our health care, in our health facilities feel safe, but patients and family members that may be visiting those sites as well. End quote. Other provinces are providing better supports for doctors, including improving working conditions, covering the cost of personal protective equipment, compensating them for administra administrative tasks, and allowing more time for each patient, said Bradshaw. I'm just going to add, in Winnipeg, doctors got to pay for their own parking and nurses, which is a fucking joke. Like, Quote, it makes you feel like you're not running, uh, sorry, it ma yeah, it makes you feel like you're not running on a treadmill all day long and it improves your quality of life. Gordon said she wants to ensure Manitoba ranks highly in the country when it comes to health care, but it'll take collaboration with stakeholders. <laughs> Manitoba. Picture living out in rural Manitoba. 
Manitoba hospitals suspend services over nursing shortage. This is what I mean, like when it really hits home. Where is uh, Audrey Gordon? A hospital in rural Manitoba has been forced to suspend its inpatient services and administration next month due to nursing shortages. Advocates say it is a scary situation that will happen more often if the province doesn't take swift action. A spokesperson for Prairie Health confirmed that, that Grandview Health Centre is temporarily suspending its inpatient services and hospital admissions in December. Patients who need hospital admission during this time will be transferred to a neighboring facility. While emergency department services will continue, they will be limited to only three or four days a week. A schedule for the emergency department will be posted on the Prairie Mountain Health website. So that is, like I said, Manitoba reality. Manitoba has third lowest doctors per capita in Canada. Can we rank somewhere good? on something like it's just negative everywhere that's what i'm saying at what point do we hold our elected officials accountable we need new blood manitoba like okay yeah i read to you guys that these stats it's just a joke and then (laughs) If this isn't like icing on the cake, city snowplowing may not get any better this winter, says Winnipeg Councillor. I mean, is winter new? Are how how are they not prepared for this? Residents frustrated uh, from Global News. Residents frustrated with the city of Winnipeg's pace of snow clearing want officials to prioritize active transportation routes. So so they didn't plow, and then there was a big uproar, and then they plowed. So get used to that, Winnipeg. Dealing with snow for about six, seven, eight days, making an uproar, and then the city will send out their plows. Snow clearing policy questioned after recent snowfall. No kidding, because if you guys recall, after the recent snowfall, they barely did any snow clearing. I mean, they did like, what, a quarter of the streets? Like, I mean, and again, again, I wish that was it. If it wasn't crime and health bad enough and winters, I mean, apparently our politicians don't know that we get winter every fucking six months. How does this happen? Winnipeg losing urban greenness faster than other Canadian cities. November 22nd. Some Canadian cities are becoming less green as tree canopies are and healthy vegetation are on the decline Winnipeg is losing its urban greenness faster than most. Can we have a win somewhere? Winnipeg has seen the second largest decline in urban greenness in the last 18 years with nearly a 25% drop in areas with trees and vegetation. Jesus. Marwitzki says uh, invasive pests play a major role in the declining vegetation. Winnipeg elm trees have been hit hard by Dutch elm disease. Since 2018, the city removed around 20,000 trees from boulevards and parks, in most cases because of Dutch elm disease. Uh, Barsky says about only 5,500 trees have been replanted. So we're down about, yeah. Just under 15,000 trees. All hands on deck. Winnipeg experiences second largest decline in urban green space in Canada. This is what I mean, Manitoba. 
everywhere we look. Like th this, where's that title? Whoops. This is a wall of shame. Who do we hold responsible if not our elected officials? And you know what? Here's the thing. What are they doing? Middle finger raised, chair struck. Manitoba MLAs call out poor behavior after short-lived civility plea. They sit there and they bicker and argue with each other. From CBC News, question period at the Manitoba Legislature has descended into accusations of inappropriate conduct in recent days after one MLA flashed their middle finger and another struck a colleague's chair with the back side of their hand. They're not solving issues. <clears throat> Sorry, they're not solving issues. Not solving our crime, economy, health care. I'll go on. Such behavior is at odds with the emotional speech made by Tory MLA Bob Legacy before a question period Thursday, who, after documenting his recent struggles with depression, urged his legislative colleagues to show each other kindness. Quote, in this environment of political theater, we tend to be harmful to the detriment of our own and our other's mental health, end quote, he said. He address, sorry, his address is uh, his address brought MLAs from all parties to their feet, but the civility was short lived. The heckles continued as usual, and an hour later, Manitoba Liberal leader Dougal Lamont raised the middle finger after he was frustrated at a non-answer from the PC House leader Kevin Gortson. Only a day earlier on Wednesday, an emotional, an emotional NDP MLA, Bernadette Smith, said she questioned her safety in the legislature, particularly as an Indigenous person. I mean, how does the race card play any factor into it? But either way, after PC MLA Blaine Peterson, a lad who's like 90 years old, hit her chair, he was trying to get Smith's attention, Peterson's colleague, had told the house i watched the video manitoba and he just tapped oh i'll play the video for you guys deputy speaker andrew micklefield urged legislative members after question period thursday to keep their motions in check quote we could all uh, sorry we can have all the benefits of this place including lively debate i'm not wanting to squash that at all but clearly things can get at hand and we've crossed some lines he said Let's make sure none of us are contributing to that, either by ourselves or perhaps by stoking others' unfortunate behavior. It started on Tuesday during question period when Peterson seemingly tried to get the attention of Smith by whacking the back of her chair. I like how they say the word whacking. Like, I think it's more of like a tap. You guys be the judge. Smith, who was seated, immediately turned around and the two MLAs appeared to have a brief discussion according to the Legislative Assembly video, which NDP provided to media. Smith alleged Peterson was trying to prevent her from speaking. Quote, the MLA from Midland may not like what I have to say, but the people of Manitoba sent me here and I have every right to say what I need to say without being hit while I sit in my chair. That's wrong. She wasn't hit, Manitoba. We don't hit people in their chairs when people are sitting in them and try to change their opinion of a person while sitting there or stop them from speaking their mind, Smith said through tears. Manitoba, after this video, she's a grown adult in our, in our legislative building passing laws. Do you think that this deserves tears? This is incredible. Her NDP colleagues, Nahani Fontaine, Melanie Marcelino, and Lisa Naylor, stood in solidarity with Smith and rested their arms on her. <laughs> Look at Peterson. He's like 90 years old. In response, Peterson said he sincerely apologized for any grief and harm he caused. PC House Leader Kevin Gortson said MLAs can watch the video and make up their own minds, but he described the action as a tap. 
Quote, I'm satisfied that whatever was done was simply to try to gather the attention of the member, end quote, Gorson said. He had... He added that he has known Peterson, who he called an honorable individual, for a long time. Quote, when he says he was not intending to cause any harm or any concern to a member, I support and I understand and I believe him 100%. On Thursday, it was Gortzen raising concern about a fellow MLA's conduct. He said Lamont gave me a hand signal that wasn't indicating that I was number one in his heart. Gorton said he wouldn't consider himself to be offended. Good job, buddy, for not being offended. But he said the hand signal is simply inappropriate in a democratic house. Lamont uh, said he welcomed the opportunity to speak in response. He apologized for his actions, but wanted to offer the context that he felt Gortson, in response to Lamont's questioning earlier in the day, was dismissing the threats that politicians opposing this year's convoy protests experienced. Whatever. He said some legislators in Manitoba were threatened, received death threats, and were approached by protesters in their offices. In recalling that, Lamont said, quote, I became frustrated, I will not do it again, and I sincerely apologize. NDP leader Wab Canoe condemned the use of the Midfinger and then invited all MLAs in the House to, quote, reflect on other behaviors that took place in the chamber this week, seemingly a reference to what Smith experienced. Quote, I would ask that there not be a double standard when we adjudicate these matters, particularly not on a partisan basis. Everyone deserves to be able to speak here freely. Everyone deserves to be able to participate, Canoe said. Before returning to legislative business, Micklefield reminded all legislators of the value of decorum. It's so funny that Wab Canoe, of all people, says, um, what would you say? Uh, particularly not on a partisan basis. Give me a break. The, okay, Manitoba, here's the video. Well, it might take a second. I don't know. It just disappeared. There's no volume, by the way. So it's right here. Oh, okay. That was it. That was it, Manitoba. Watch it again. Oh. It happened so fast. (laughs) She was in tears because of that. In tears. You be, you guys be the judge. So either way, this is what our our MLAs are doing. While we have record crime, record health care problems, like we're not going to be able to what plow our streets this winter. Uh, we're losing our urban forest. Like, and this is what they're doing. They're bickering. Complaining about a tap of a chair, about a middle finger. So, congratulations on your hard work. Manitoba Emily introduces legislation to protect pets in extreme temperature. I agree with it, but this is what they do. Oh my god. They're making over a hundred grand, and they come up with a uh, this is the kind of shit they pass with, with with all these other articles that I just showed you. In between their bickering, they in between their bickering, in between all these other articles, this is what they come up with. And last but not least, Manitoba, look at this, twenty nine minutes, right on time. I just want to show you this quote because this was pretty much I came across it when Doctor Rusin uh, held his town hall which was a complete joke. But by, look at Dr. Jillian Horton, considering one of the last times a public health official in Manitoba addressed the population, he said, quote, it's okay to get infected. 
This would be a really good week for correction, direction, bigger picture on flu, RSV, clear messaging, and media availability from our top official NPH, public health. Again, I'm not saying that I agree with probably anything she has to say, even though she's a doctor. But um, it's just funny that just no one likes Rusin. <laughs> like, no one thinks he's doing a good job. So I said, we all agree that public health is a failure, but everyone puts their head in the sand and freaks out as soon as you mention the word private. So it's okay to have a failing healthcare system as long as it's free. I don't get it. Even though, like, uh, Stephenson made it pretty clear that um, it's still going to be free. But uh, it, everyone just freaks out, like I said. But either way, Manitoba, like I said, like, at, at what point do we hold them accountable? This is our Manitoba. Every single article here is just a failure. So at what point do we hold them accountable? But either way, Manitoba, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I'm going to do my best to come back on Thursday. And uh, in the meantime, I recommend going to look at Keystone Party. Just Google it, Keystone Party of Manitoba. Because the status quo is giving us the worst crime in Manitoba, record-breaking homicides in Winnipeg, a healthcare crisis, we can't plow our snow, we're losing our urban forest, and our current parties are crying over the tapping of a chair, and they're giving each other the middle finger. And when they can finally produce, out of all the things that I talked about, they come up with uh, pet legislation. Like, it's just a joke. But either way, Manitoba, thank you so much. Um, I love you guys, and I'll see you guys, like I said, hopefully Thursday. Bye.